Current systems can only work for interactions between products, which everybody is subbing. Yeah, that's fantastic. It's not fantastic. Yeah? And if you need to adjust the dosage, for instance, for operation rate or something, you need a lab result actually to calculate. But you do that. Yeah? But this system will at least tell you that you need to do it. And it will probably even give you the formula, but what I don't ever want to do is actually do it for you. Why? Because then you get into these flow chart systems where you say and he says you have to do this. That I don't want to do. Mm. This is all a guideline, so the formula will be there. Eh? Maybe even a button if you want to use a calculator to do it, but he will not come out and draw the conclusion for you. I think that's an important uh, say barrier you should not cross. But indeed, he would do that. He would warn you for that. Current systems can't. And if you compare what current systems do, they warn for interactions, not because they should, but because they can. Eh? Because it's the only thing these systems can do. But if you go back to the time before electronic healthcare records, we also had interactions. We never were really worried about them because I don't say we could not make the mistake, but it's not the most important mistake we made. We made many worse mistakes than that. Eh? Interactions are not that hard to know for a doctor. You can forget some, but they're usually, you know, pretty burned in what they are. Secondly, they're usually not that very dangerous. It's not like combine that pill with that one and the patient turns into TNT and explodes. That's a rare thing. You have interactions like aspirin and anticoagulants. Everybody knows that. You can make the mistake. You can be stupid anyway. What I'm seeing in all these systems is interaction. Tetracyclines have an effect on the pill. I think after reading about about 250 times, I think there were 60 young women in Britain that got pregnant with the pill because they got tetracyclines. Fine. That had been told to me 250 times. in me. Every time I give a woman, irrespective of age, 80 years or more, eardrops with tetracycline in it, he tells me she's going to get pregnant. That is so ridiculous. It, I mean, the first three times it was hilarious. The other 247 times it was pretty boring. It doesn't work through eye drops, right? It has to be pills or an injection, right? But the system doesn't know the difference, which means that I never look at the warnings anymore. Uh, I don't think I missed much. I probably missed something, but not much. If I miss something, the pharmacist will probably tell me, because they, in Sweden they have a database of everything a patient gets. I never ever once, in all these, and I've worked a couple of years in Sweden, never ever once gotten a phone call from a pharmacist, they have to call if it's like that, telling me that I prescribed something that interacts with something else. So I think I actually never made the mistake, even though I don't read the warnings, because they're stupid. Eh? So I think it's a problem, but it's a very minor problem. The only reason everybody talks about this is because the only thing they can do. What is a problem in medicine is contraindications. That is hard, that is frequent, that is deadly. Okay? If you have a patient with certain cardiac arrhythmias, for instance, and you give certain products for the prostate, for the eyes, for whatever, and that arrhythmia kills him. Two problems. First, maybe you didn't know he had arrhythmia. Second, knowing that this arrhythmia is sensitive to that product is hard. That's much harder for us to remember. And no, than interactions between products. But nobody warns you because, uh, for that. Why? Because amazingly, the electronic healthcare records that we have have no concept of disease. That entity does not exist. No, it's absolutely not rules. It's uh, textual guidelines equipped with fields that you can fill in. What it does never do is act on what you fill in. It never acts on it. You act on it. It's like you printed it out on paper and took notes in the margin. But going over to actually act on rules is a step I don't want to take because a few systems have done that and they are universally hated. Because what happens, I also tried a little experiment a long time ago with a little system that diagnosed uh, uh, icterus, which is when you turn yellow. Right? You have somebody turn yellow and you say, are they yellow? Do they have fever? Don't they have fever? Is it more greenish yellow? Is it more yellow yellow? Uh, do they have pain there or not? And so forth. And you can go down and find out if they have a colidocus uh, stone in their gallbladder or in the 
hepatic ways or so forth, or in infection is very interesting. But the effect even on me, and I wrote it, right? it's like, I don't want to use this. Because the first thing is, and this was written with prologue, so it was an inference engine, if somebody knows this kind of stuff still which only asks the questions it needs to get to the next conclusion. So it's interesting in that way. It only asks the question as it goes along in its reasoning. But after a while it was, yeah, but if I answer yes here, does he tell me something more I want to know? No, no, that's not the path I want to go. So I go back and I answer no, so I can get the other path to find out what he was going to ask me then. So it starts to be like, you know, you're actually gaming the system to get it to tell you, uh, eh? That's with the guideline. You see the whole thing. You see the result. How did you get that? Don't forget. Don't try to eliminate the doctor with the flowchart system. Maybe you should in the long term because it's cheaper. But that's 50 years or 30 years in the future. Today, you need to assist the doctor. And you don't assist him by giving him a system telling him to go right and left. A map of medicine, the, the British system is something like that. Sells like crazy because every administrator in the hospital says, something that replaces doctors. Yes, nobody uses it, so they throw it out again. It costs 100 million crowns a pop, I think. None of these systems have ever succeeded in practice. They only succeed if you take care that the system never takes a decision based on what you put to it unless you ask it for assistance. And that's, that's a sacred line that you should never cross with the doctors because they will kill you if you try. Okay? Don't do that. Which means in this thing, he could calculate the re renal insufficiency. But what he will do is add the formula there. This is the formula. You know it, but you forgot it. There it is. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to calculate for it? Here's a button you can push. You put in the numbers. Is this the number you want to put in? OK, I'll put it in for you. This value, you want to do something with that? Copy and paste somewhere? OK, fine. Okay? Which means it lets me look at the information, it looks it up for me, but it never acts on it. <laughs> no. Nobody asked for it. <laughs> and it's an iPad, it doesn't have control F. Uh, what? No, there's nothing to learn. No, I, I get to the rest of the system soon. But what I wanted to do, I uh, see I don't have a slide of that, is this that you can find in your notes, which is a minor, it's towards the end, page 27, where I said the top part is how, in general, in very rough outline, current systems, the page 27, yeah. uh, the top one is how current systems actually see a patient record. The patient is on top, and then follows the encounter, and then follows everything else. If you look in the system, you see, okay, dates, 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 encounters, encounters, encounters. And on each account, you see which doctor it was, and where he works, and, you know, everything. I'm not interested in that. I don't care if a patient is with me. I don't care how many times he was there the last month. What I care is what's wrong with him. And that's never to be found, because there is no concept disease in these systems. There is the ICD-10 code. Down at the bottom somewhere, that doesn't count. Because it's not done with that object. Also, as soon as they change system, the whole table is gone and so forth. It's not a primary concept in the system. And what I would do is patient problems or issues. Sorry, forget problems. Issues. Eh? That's his diseases or symptoms. It could be headache. That's not a disease. It's a symptom. But something you have to check for. Then as details, you have which doctor, where, when, if you really need to know. But the major concept must be the issue the patient has. It's like the current system is like you did an accounting system, but you forgot the concept money. There's no money in it. Yes, you can do accounting that way because you can write everyone, yes, I took this invoice from that guy and I paid half of it. You can write that in an accounting program. That's a kind of accounting. But it's a very heavy-duty way, way of working with it, right? If you introduce the concept of money, it makes things easier, because that's what it's all about. Healthcare is about diseases and treatments. I think it should exist in the records. Right? And that's what we're doing here. Now, then the interesting thing, if I take a national registry, 
it actually turns out to be the same thing as a guideline, except I don't have entry fields. Because what I did here, and that's a major difference with current systems, is that anything you enter here becomes part of a pool of values. This value in any other guideline, if that value occurs, it will already be filled in. Which means if I have hypertension, I go to cardiac decompensation here, that value will be in both places. I don't need to repeat my job. Right? If I say headache, and I fill in a lot of things, and I say, no, it's not headache, it's a migraine. So I remove the issue headache, and I replace it with migraine, most of my things will already be filled in, which means it's easy to progress from one diagnosis to a more specialized diagnosis. In these things, you also have, as you have in all gu good guidelines, you have, uh, most of these I didn't do, you have other diseases and you have differential diagnosis, things that you have to exclude or check out. So from these, you could go directly to those guidelines, work through them and either replace the previous with this one. Yes, it is migraine. Say, no, it's not migraine because of that. You go back and then it's crossed over. You show that you actually excluded that thing. Now, which means that if you do a guideline with no input fields, it could serve as a national registry form. And this is what I mean. All of a sudden, it's a natural. It's nothing uh, that you have to go and do an extra work for. It's already there. The only thing you need to do is send it. And the way I formulate this is that you, in the template itself, which is an XML file behind this, you specify the latest value or the highest value of the last several years or whatever. You can define that. So the selection of what you get here is depending on what the registry actually wants. And since this is a very simple structure, this form can actually be made by the registry that wants the data. One of the first projects we're going to do is, just to show you the idea, and here it looks awful, but on an iPad it looks really great. You can have the actual images here, and the first project we're going to do is with um, ankle fractures. So they can go in and directly mark, the, you know, these A, B, C. I forgot them. Right? There are different classes of fractures, different levels, and they get treated, some with just plaster, some have to be operated upon, and so forth. So they can do that directly here, and then again, it's going to ask them to mark it with a finger, for instance, and it's going to give them the table, like class A is that, class B is that, class C is that. It's not going to tell them, oh, you marked here, so it has to be operated on. You can't cross that line. But it's going to tell, give you the information you need to make that decision at that point. 